for this playlist, you want to develop basic methods for higher mathematics. Here, we're moving away from the raw computation and technique, say calculus. Instead, we want to focus on arguing mathematical statements rigorously. This type of mathematical argument is what we call a proof. So, proof is a story told using mathematical statements. Now, for an overview, in a proof, we'll start with axioms. So these are going to be the mathematical statements that we assume from the outset. To these axioms, we're going to apply the rules of logic. From that, we'll get more mathematical statements. Then, if we put these new statements with the axioms, we can continue applying the rules of logic to derive more statements. When we get to a statement that we feel is important enough, we'll stop and we'll call the final statement a theorem. In practice, the picture looks something like this. So we'll have a collection of axioms a sub i. We apply the rules of logic. Out comes a statement s sub 1. Then I'll put s sub 1 with our axioms. We apply the rules of logic to the axioms in s sub 1. We get another statement s sub 2. Then I'll take s sub 2, put it with the axioms in s sub 1. We apply the rules of logic, and then out comes what I'll call theorem 1, because that's where we're going to stop. So for here, I want to focus on okay, what we call the propositional calculus. These are going to be the rules of logic that allow us to create new mathematical statements from old mathematical statements. Along the way, we'll also learn how to use truth tables. Now, we're interested in constructing new statements from old statements. For now, the statements themselves won't be so important. We're going to assume that every statement that we have is either true or false. Now, for a statement like, this statement is false, which is a paradox, that would get into the issue of how we choose our axioms, and that we hand over to the set theorists. So for here, we're just interested in construction. Now, for our first construction, we're going to have negation. So this is the not construction. The idea here, okay, so if I have a statement A, what we'll do is set up a truth table. So if I have a single statement, the possibilities are, okay, A is either true or false. Okay, we don't worry about which it is yet. Then for negation, okay, we're going to use this little hook in front, put it in front of A. And what negation does, it turns true statements to false, false statements to true. Okay, and semantically the way we do that is just by inserting not into your sentence. So for instance, if I had A given by 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, okay, that's a true statement. If we negate, we'll have 2 plus 2 is not equal to 4, which is false. Likewise, if we take A as the statement 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, which is false, when we negate, I would have 2 plus 2 is not equal to 5, and that's true. For our next operation, we have conjunction. Conjunction takes two statements, they call them A and B, returns a new statement that we call A and B. Okay, we write this with a hat. A and B will be true only if both A and B are true at once. So, for the truth table, Okay, now how do we set it up when we have more than one statement? Well, for the B, I'm going to alternate between true and false. As I move to the left, we'll alternate in twos, fours, eights, and so on, until we have all possibilities. For A and B, okay, this is true only when both A and B are true, so I'll get true in the first row and then false in all others. For an example, well, A be the statement 2 plus 2 is 4, which is true. B is the statement 1 plus 3 is 5, which is false. Then A and B, which is just 2 plus 2 is 4, and 1 plus 3 is equal to 5, is a false statement. Now, to go with and, we have or. So this is going to be the operation of disjunction. Here, A or B. Okay, so we write this with the hat flipped upside down. 
This is gonna be true when at least one of A or B is a true statement. So for the truth table, okay, we set it up as before. Here, if we go across, we just check to see that there's a true in either one of these slots. So we're only gonna get a false in the last row. Using the same statements as before, if I take two plus two equals four, or one plus three equals five, we have a true statement because two plus two equal to four is true. Now, you'll also see once in a while what we call the exclusive or. This is gonna occur when exactly one of our statements A or B is true, but not both at the same time. So the way we would change the truth table is just to put a false in the first row. For the last operation, we have implication. So we'll write this with an arrow. Okay, so we say A implies B, or if A, then B. Now, for A implies B to be true, we'll want that B is true whenever A is true. So if we set up the truth table, okay, so, we'll have true always except for when A is true and B is false. Now, those last two rows, okay, you might be wondering what's going on here. Okay, so note, what are we doing? When I check A implies B, we first check whether A is true or not. If A is true, then I have to check to see if B is true. So the first two rows, okay, the answer is clear. For the last two rows, what's happening, when we check to see whether A is true or not, well, A is false, so it doesn't matter whether B is true or not. So this is gonna be vacuously true because there's nothing to check. So we'll have true in both of these rows. Now, a new feature with implication for conjunction and disjunction, so and and or, the order didn't matter. Here, order will make a difference. So for instance, if we write out, okay, the truth table for B implies A, we're gonna switch the order of the true and false in the middle. Now, we give B implies A a special name. We'll call that the converse of A implies B. One other special thing to note about implication. Okay, we usually think of if then as being cause and effect, but here we really don't need to have a cause leading to an effect. So for instance, if I have the statements, okay, A as water is wet, B as fire is hot, we can just check things out in our truth table as before. So for instance, if water is wet, then fire is hot. Okay, both of those are true. So we have a true statement. And note, there's no real cause and effect here. If I try, if water is wet, then fire is not hot. Okay, that's a false statement. We have a true implying a false. Then if I try, if water is not wet, then fire is not hot, I have a false implying a false, so that's a true statement. Okay, and of course, it's vacuously true because we never get past the first statement. Now, there are more operations beyond those four, but those four are the ones we typically use in proofs. For us, we'll bring in other operations under the guise of using complicated expressions in our truth tables. So for instance, another operation, we have the biconditional. So we write this with a double arrow. We say A if and only if B. Okay, and you'll see this written as if with two Fs. Now, this is just a shorthand for A implies B and B implies A. So how do we set up the truth table for this? Well, we set up our columns for A and B as usual. Okay, we've just seen how to get a column for A implies B, a column for B implies A. And now I wanna consider, okay, this statement and this statement. So just look and see where they're both true. Okay, remember for and, we have to have both true to get a true statement out, otherwise it's false. So I'll have true, false, false, and true. So. The biconditional will be true when A and B are both true or both false. Now, as a final example, let's consider the following truth table, which has three statements. 
So I'm just picking at random, okay, the statement A implies B and not C. Now to set this up, recall, what do we do? I'll set columns for A, B, and C. For C, we'll alternate between true and false. For B, I'm going to alternate by twos. So I have two trues, two falses, two trues, two falses. Then for A, I alternate by fours. So I have four trues, four falses. The way you know that you've set things up right, the number of rows that you should have should be two to the number of statements. So here I have two to the three equal to eight, and we have eight rows. Now, if I want to work, Okay, same basic idea as with, okay, multiplication is addition. We're going to start on the inside of the parentheses and work our way out. So the first thing I need to do is to compute not C. So we look at the column for C. Then I'm just going to take trues, send them the false, false, send them the trues. Then I want, okay, next step, it's going to be B and not C. So I have to compare the column for B with the column for not C, we only get a true when both are true, otherwise false. So if we work that out, we'll get this column. Okay, so note, true, false is false, true, true is true, and so on. Then I have to consider A implies, okay, and then this expression B and not C. Now note, okay, part of the work here is easy. If A is false, this is automatically going to be true. Okay, we don't need to worry about what's here. So I have four trues. Then I have to look for where both are true to get a true statement out. So that'll give me true false is false, true true is true, true false, and true false. So both falses. And that's our final answer in this last column.